Doohickey and the Robot by Jonathan Emmett Chapter 1 Doohickey had just moved to a new town when he spotted a notice. It was stuck outside a big house at the end of his street. Professor seeks young assistant to help with exciting experiments and interesting inventions. Please ring the bell. That's the job for me, said Doohickey. I need some more pocket money. He pushed the doorbell. Then he jumped. Weow, weow, weow. Kaboom! A loud alarm sounded inside the house, followed by a terrific explosion. A window flew open at the top of the house. A cloud of thick smoke billowed out. What, what do you want? coughed a voice from inside the cloud. Can't you see that I'm busy? The smoke cleared. The professor's face peered down at Doohickey. Excuse me, said Doohickey. My name's Doohickey. I've come about the job. What job? snapped the professor. As assistant, said Doohickey, the notice says you need one. Oh, absolutely, said the professor, beginning to grin. The notice had been up for over a year, but Doohickey was the first person to ask about it. Come on up, said the professor. His head disappeared. A moment later the front door sprang half open. Doohickey peered inside. A huge mountain of post had stopped the door from opening properly, but there was no one there. Doohickey felt sure that the door had opened for him, so he squeezed through into the hallway. A buzzer sounded in Doohickey's ear. He was surprised to see a little airship bobbing in the hallway beside him. Tiny propellers spun the ship around. Doohickey saw the words, Follow me, written in big red letters on its side. Chapter 2 He followed the ship up a tall, winding staircase. He passed room after room, stuffed full of strange-looking machines. Were they the professor's inventions? Doohickey knew that he was supposed to go straight up the stairs, but he couldn't help himself. He popped into one of the rooms to take a closer look. The first thing Doohickey came across was a computer screen fixed to a huge metal cage. The cage seemed to be stuffed full of straw. Doohickey pushed his hand into it. Ouch! he squealed, pulling it out again. A tiny needle was sticking out of his thumb. There was a label fixed to the computer screen. The X-ray grassograph for finding a needle in a haystack. Well, it didn't find this one, said Doohickey crossly as he stuck the needle back into the straw. The next machine had lots of electric fans fixed beneath a large metal funnel. There was sand all over the floor. The label said, The Pneumatic Photo Fabricator for Building Sandcastles in the Air. This looks like fun, thought Doohickey. He switched it on. Sand began trickling out of the funnel and the fan started spinning. Then the strangest thing happened. The sand didn't fall to the floor. It hung in the air and slowly it shaped itself into a floating castle. Doohickey walked slowly around the machine. He couldn't believe what he was seeing. Then, all of a sudden, he bumped into someone else. When he saw who it was, he nearly jumped out of his skin. The other person was him. It was like looking in a mirror, except that there was no glass. Doohickey reached out his hand, and the other Doohickey did the same. Their fingers met in mid-air, and he felt the warmth of his own hand pressing back. It was too creepy. Ugh! shivered Doohickey. He stepped backwards, straight into the floating sandcastle. The castle exploded, and Doohickey found himself in the middle of a sandstorm. Sand blew everywhere, into his eyes and up his nose. Coughing and sneezing, he groped his way back to the switch and turned it off. The sandstorm disappeared, and so had the other Doohickey. Then Doohickey noticed a large metal plate on the floor. There was another label on it. Of course, sighed Doohickey. The metal plate was another of the professor's inventions. It had made the other Doohickey appear when he had stepped onto it. I won't try that again, he thought. It's a bit too spooky. A buzzer sounded. Doohickey saw the airship bobbing up and down in the doorway. It had come back to find him. I got lost, said Doohickey. 
He couldn't think of a better excuse. The ship buzzed again crossly and glided back towards the stairs. Coming, said Doohickey. Chapter 3 They reached the top of the house. The airship led Doohickey into a smoky attic. It was stuffed full of books, test tubes and lumps of tangled wiring. A small shaggy dog peered out at him from beneath a workbench. A cat lay sunning itself on the window sill. What kept you? asked the professor. He was hunched over a heap of metal in one corner. I was admiring some of your inventions, said Doohickey. Oh, those old things, said the professor. This, he said, pointing to the twisted heap of metal, is my latest and greatest invention. What is it? asked Doohickey. It didn't look very exciting. He expected that it was a machine for getting blood from a stone, or for making omelettes without breaking eggs. It's the Roboffin 2000 multi-purpose robot, said the professor proudly. What does it do? asked Doohickey. Absolutely anything, said the professor. Let me show you. The professor scribbled some words onto a scrap of paper. He fed the paper through the slot in the robot's chest. Then he pressed a big button and stepped back. The robot hummed and whirred for a bit. Then it climbed slowly to its feet. It was enormous. Its head almost scraped the attic ceiling. The lights on the robot's face flickered on and off. It looked as if it was thinking about something. And then it painted a picture of the professor's dog. It played a piece of music on the test tubes. And it discovered three new ways of splitting the atom. Pretty good, eh? said the professor when the robot had finished. Cool, said Doohickey. He was really amazed. The huge, heavy robot had whizzed around the attic, and it hadn't disturbed so much as a paper clip. It can do anything I ask it to, said the professor. Anything? asked Doohickey. Absolutely, said the professor. Can I have a go? asked Doohickey. He wanted to ask the robot to build a space rocket, or tell him next week's winning lottery numbers. Absolutely not, said the professor. It's far too complicated. Besides, I've got better things for you to do. Such as, said Doohickey. He was disappointed. Such as these, said the professor, writing out a list. What month is it, by the way? August, said Doohickey. Summer? Already? said the professor. He looked surprised. I must go out and pay my bills. He handed Doohickey the list of jobs. I'll be gone for the rest of the day, he said, rushing out of the door. So these jobs should be finished by the time I get back. If you can't find anything, ask Newton. Who's Newton? shouted Doohickey as the professor swept down the stairs. I am, said the dog. You can talk, said Doohickey, staring at the dog. How clever of you to notice, said Newton. And the cat? asked Doohickey, looking at the other animal. Can the cat talk too? Of course not, scoffed Newton. It's only a cat. Doohickey didn't know what to say to this, so he looked at the list of jobs the professor had given him. Cook the dinner, hoover the hall carpet, seal the leaky roof, water the pot plants, hang the picture, wash the dirty clothes, mow the lawn, paint the front door. These jobs are all boring, said Doohickey. The notice said I'd be helping with exciting experiments and interesting inventions. Of course it did said Newton, otherwise you wouldn't have wanted the job. Well, I don't want the job, said Doohickey. I don't want to cook and clean all day. He tore up the list and threw it into a bin. I'm off, he said. Suit yourself, said Newton. Chapter 4 Doohickey went back down the winding staircase past the rooms full of inventions. Look at all these silly machines, he thought. Why doesn't the professor invent something useful? something that could do the housework. Then he had a brainwave. Of course, he said. He set off upstairs again. Back so soon, said Newton. I thought you didn't want the job. I didn't, said Doohickey, but I've had a brainwave. Oh, we get lots of them around here, said the dog, yawning. Doohickey picked the list out of the bin. He stuck it back together with some sticky tape. How does that look, he asked, showing it to Newton. Newton studied the list. It looks okay to me, he said. Now for the clever bit, said Doohickey. 
he climbed on top of a stool and fed the stuck-together list through the slot in the robot's chest. Oh dear, said Newton, shaking his head. The professor isn't going to like this. The professor isn't going to find out, said Doohickey. He hit the big button. The robot hummed, whirred, and then straightened itself up. It'll all end in tears, sighed Newton. The lights on the robot's face flickered on and off for a few minutes, and then it stomped out of the attic. Piece of cake, said Doohickey, grinning. Now, where can I take a nap? The robot stomped down the stairs and into the professor's bathroom. It grabbed a great armful of dirty clothes. Then it carried them down to the kitchen. But instead of putting them into the washing machine, it stuffed them into the oven. Next, it took some meat and vegetables out of the fridge. It chopped and sliced them to make a delicious stew. Then it emptied the whole lot into the washing machine. After that, it brought the lawnmower into the house and ran it over the hall carpet. And it took a hoover outside and sucked the leaves off the lawn. Chapter 5 the professor's neighbours were used to strange things going on at his house, but they had never seen anything quite like the robot. "'What do you think it's up to?' asked one of them. The robot had just fetched a hammer and nails. It was now nailing up the front door. "'Perhaps the professor's gone away,' suggested another, "'and he's afraid that someone will try and break in.' The robot didn't seem to mind that everyone was looking at it. It propped a ladder up against the side of the house. Then it climbed to the top and began to brush bright green paint all over the roof. Newton was half asleep when the robot stomped into the attic, carrying a watering can. The pot plants are in the living room, said the dog helpfully. The huge machine lumbered towards him. I should have known something would go wrong, he sighed, as the robot emptied the watering can over his head. Doohickey was still fast asleep on the professor's bed. "'Wake up! Wake up!' barked Newton, shaking his wet fur in the boy's face. "'What's wrong?' yawned Doohickey, rubbing his eyes. "'Oh, just about everything,' said Newton. "'What's happened?' asked Doohickey. "'The robot's gone mad,' said Newton. "'Last time I saw it, it was pulling up the pot plants. I told you it would all end in tears.' Chapter 6 They ran downstairs to the hall. The carpet was covered in shredded paper. "'What's happened here?' asked Doohickey. He looked dazed. Newton held up a scrap of paper with a postage stamp stuck to it. "'It's the professor's letters,' he said. "'But it looks like they've been through a shredder,' said Doohickey. "'Or a lawnmower,' suggested Newton. In the kitchen they found the dirty cloves burning in the oven and the stew churning around inside the washing machine. "'I don't understand!' groaned Doohickey. What went wrong? The robot seems to have got the jobs mixed up, said Newton. But how, said Doohickey. You saw the list that I gave it. You said it was okay. I said it looked okay, said Newton, but I didn't read it. Why not? wailed Doohickey. The dog looked uncomfortable. You can read, can't you? asked Doohickey. Of course not, said Newton. I'm only a dog. Just then the robot stomped in through the back door. It was trailing a bunch of bedraggled pot plants behind it, having taken the plants for a walk. The robot dragged the plants through to the living room and dropped them back into their pots. Stop at once, commanded Doohickey, standing in front of it. But the robot barred straight past him, into the kitchen. It won't stop until it's done everything on the list, explained Newton. So what's it doing now? asked Doohickey. The robot ripped the fridge from the wall and carried it upstairs. Beats me, said Newton. The robot carried the fridge all the way up to the attic. It stopped in front of Newton's freshly painted picture. It opened the fridge door, took out a piece of pie, and jammed it into the mouth painted on the picture of Newton. It made a hole in the picture, and the pie fell out of the other side. The robot took some more food and stuffed it into the hole. It's feeding the picture, said Newton. But it's supposed to hang the picture, said Doohickey, trying to remember the professor's list. And feed the cat, finished Newton. So that means that next it will try to... Oh no, wailed Doohickey, as the robot set off towards the sleeping cat. 
Chapter 7 The professor knew that there was something wrong when he saw the crowd of people standing outside his house. He knew that something was terribly wrong when he saw the green paint dripping from his roof and heard the cat screeching in the attic. He bounded up to the front door and found that it was nailed shut. He rushed around the back of the house and in the back door. He could smell something burning, but he didn't stop to find out what. He ran straight up the stairs, three steps at a time, and burst into the attic. The attic was a nightmare. The robot was lurching around the room with a length of electric cable. It was trying to catch the cat. Luckily, the terrified cat was staying one leap ahead of it. Between the two of them, they had managed to knock over most of the professor's equipment. Doohickey was jumping up and down in front of the robot, trying to hit the buttons on its chest. Newton was sitting on a tall cupboard, enjoying the show. Without saying a word, the professor strode across the room and hit the big button on the robot's chest. The robot stopped chasing the cat, let out a little sigh and toppled over. A scrap of paper rolled out of the slot in its chest. The professor snatched up the paper and looked at it. Wash the dinner, mow the hall carpet, paint the leaky roof, walk the pot plants, feed the picture, cook the dirty clothes, hoover the lawn, seal the front door, water the dog, hang the cat. Who is responsible for this? he said quietly. Don't look at me, said Newton. I'm only a dog. Do hickey, said the professor. Um, I was just, uh, panted Doohickey. The professor gave Doohickey a hard stare. You see, I just, um, thought that... Doohickey tried to explain. The professor gave Doohickey an even harder stare. It was all my fault, said Doohickey. Absolutely, agreed the professor. Doohickey gazed around the attic. It had been untidy to start with, but that was nothing to how it looked now. The professor was giving him another hard stare. Oh, said Doohickey slowly, I suppose you want me to clear up all this mess. Absolutely, repeated the professor. Right-o, said Doohickey, I'd better get on with it. It would take hours to tidy up on his own. He looked around for Newton, but the dog had vanished. Um, I don't suppose, he said carefully, looking at the professor, I could use the robot to... Absolutely not, shouted the professor. The End